All right. Um, that's a little too dark in here. That's better. Um, first off, I am feeling a little bit better. Um, my nose is still a little stuffed up. But other than that, I'm okay. Um, where my shirt inside out. Anyway, um, a request here from I'm guessing Sneaky Cayenne Turtle. S N K Y C Y A N T U R T L E. Um, basically wants to know how I got inter how I first got started in the um, you know gun control thing and guns and stuff. Um, to be honest, I don't know. Um, I've always been interested in firearms. Um, I was the kid who you know, always had cap guns, water guns, Nerf guns, BB guns, and all that. Um, it was actually my 21st birthday. Well, no. I think I was 22. No, I was 21. I might have been, no, I might have been 20 when I bought my first gun, my first um, 22 rifle. I still got it. Um, it was a week, two weeks after my 21st birthday when I bought my first handgun. Um, I have sold that. Kind of wish I hadn't, but I needed the money, unfortunately. Um, but I still have my first rifle. My first real gun, you know. Um, for those who are wondering, it was a, uh, a Savage 62, 22 caliber rifle, and a Taurus Millennium 9mm, my first handgun. Um, even back when I was, you know, you know, younger, you know, I would get, you know, gun magazines and stuff like that, you know. Um, pretty much my parents, um, my dad was more supportive than my mom, even though he's not a big gun enthusiast, he's, you know, you know, he's gone shooting with me, he'll go shooting with me anytime he really, you know, has time and stuff, you know. Uh, my mom has never fired a gun, as far as I know. Um, she does that kind of, you know, turns the blind eye kind of. She doesn't really like it, but, you know, she's not going to stop me. Um, the reason I like guns is, one of them is mechanics. It's really fascinating to me the mechanics of, of how the guns work. Yeah. Let's see is empty. Okay. How you pull this lever down here and do the system with um, gear or not gears but levers Brings, it pulls this piece back, then releases it, and due to some springs, it drives enough force to go forward into the chamber here, igniting the primer, igniting the powder, sending the projectile down the barrel. That's pretty cool. And then you can take, and you can actually remove, or cover this piece so it's not open. Change this here. Change this a little bit. Change basically just um, a few things of it, and now it's a completely different system. It's some automatic. Or it's full automatic, you know. And it's just really interesting to me. And it's also interesting, like, this, the cylinder here, is a precise piece of equipment, but I can throw it against a wall. You know, it's that, it's, it's durable, precision equipment. Um, plus, I like the boom boom, you know. Um, I tell people I like the power, 
And it's not like, oh, okay, I've got a gun, so you're going to do what I want. No, that's not the power. The power is, I control. Actually, I need an empty for right now. I control an explosion in my hand. And I can make something happen over there. That's cool. That's I like that power over the force of, you know, fire, explosions, or whatever. Heavy. Plus, I respect the, the skill it takes to shoot that target way over there. Um, I was watching um, Top Shot, and I can't remember his last name, but George, a thousand meters away, I believe it was, or a thousand feet, thousand yards, whatever it was, one single shot. That's cool. You know, that's something that, you know, only, and I don't mean to, you know, disrespect anybody out there or anything like this, but that is something only people who know that skill set can truly appreciate. You know, a lot of people who don't know a lot about guns are like, wow, you shot one, one bullet a thousand yards, wow, that's amazing. But it's so much more when you know that you have to factor in the wind. The wind at the muzzle, the wind here, the wind here, the wind here, the wind here, the wind all the way down to the target. You also have to factor in the elevation of your shot, where your target's at, and if, you know, if you got to go up or down. You know, if you're shooting here, you can't shoot straight. you got to shoot down. You also got to count into the arc of the bullet. Okay? Because each round fires at a different angle. You know? By the way, if you've ever heard it's a flat shooting round, that's what they're meaning. It has very little bit of an arc on it. Um, you know, you have to take into effect the temperature. You really do. And people think, well, wh wh what do you mean? Well, it's simply this. On a really, really hot day, the ground actually gives off heat. You can actually see, if you've ever seen the wave lines, that's a mirage. And that can actually shift where your, where your target actually looks like. So you might see your target here, but it's actually down here. And so you're going to be shooting up here and you're going to be wrong. Okay? Um... You know, I can't remember what he said. I think he said it was like five seconds or something like that of actual bullet flight. You have to think about that. Because you can see that target. Let's say there's a flag right next to the target, which preferably for long range shooting you will have that. But you also have to think, what's that wind going to be doing in two seconds when the bullet's actually there? Because now in two seconds can be different. You know, I also love the history of guns, you know, music, example, but, you know, this gun could be 200 years old. How many people have held this? How many people have shot this in that 200 years? You know, it's, it's like coins, you know, I have a small coin collection, it's the same thing. So, that's why I love it. You know. So, but why do you people? You know, for those of you who watch my videos and those of you of you who are firearms enthusiasts, why do you? Eh, that's all I got.